Please, dear Lord, make them stop purchasing the wrong vehicles to start their NEMT business. Hello everyone, it's Joel Davis with United Medical Transportation Providers Group. And realistically, I'm not praying in jest. So many of you keep investing. It, it, it just it confounds me. It amazes me how many people are willing to go out there and spend good money on vehicles. And I understand that you're motivated, you're well-intentioned, you just want to dive all in. But you'll spend money on vehicles that you don't even know what you're doing yet. Let me go through another email that I feel like I've gone through these type of emails a million and one times. Lisa sent this over to me. It's from Raul. Hi, Joel. I have been looking uh, for information about NEMT, so I have found your videos on YouTube. Uh, I am now one of your subscribers. This idea has been in my head for a while, so in December, I decided to purchase a wheelchair accessible uh, van. It's a 14-passenger bus. For now, I have it as commercial for personal use with the with minimal insurance, the bus has a nice look. Uh, my question is, do you think it's enough to start my business? For now, I just want it as part-time, as a way to make extra income. Thank you in advance. Raul, dear Lord Jesus, please help some of these people. Uh, Raul, 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 why would you not just practice a little bit of patience uh, study more of my material before you spend this money. You do not want to start your business with this type of vehicle. I don't know how much you spent. I'm not going to waste my time going into lengthy diatribe, um, explaining all the reasons why. I'm going to share a clip from my uh, Atlanta roundtable gathering. I'm going to share a clip where someone asked me, what is the ideal vehicle? But you do not want to start your NEMT business with a 14 passenger bus for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, maintenance is probably gonna be much higher. Fuel is gonna be higher. Uh, um, the, um, because it's 14 passenger, chances are very good, depending on where you're located, and I don't know where you're located, you don't mention it here. Chances are very good. The rules and regulations are going to be much more stringent and strict. Um, you may have some weight capacity issues that are going to push you into higher regulation. Bottom line is, unless you have a contract telling you this is what you need, this is not what you get. This is not what you want, Raul. I'm sorry. I'm sure you're going to unsubscribe. So be it. I understand. But this is not the vehicle that you want. I am glad to see that uh, at least you have it on uh, a basic commercial policy right now just so your insurance premiums aren't too high until you get going. But you do mention something very interesting. You say, for now, I just want it part-time as a way to make extra income. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're looking to just make extra income, why would you even waste that money? Just go drive for Uber or Lyft. And I'm just being honest with you. I'm not trying to be mean, Raul. It is what it is. I see it too often. Uh, if you're looking to just make a little side money, a little side hustle, go drive for Uber and Lyft. Don't get involved with the capital investment or any other obligations. Uh, there are people I work with who they start the business personally part-time, but they employ someone full-time because think logically. Let's say you're transporting dialysis patients. They have to go three times a week. Well, that's not a, that's not a a side hustle for you. That's not a, a part-time hustle for you. I mean, if you want to build a legitimate business, uh, you have to be willing to invest legitimate effort. In fact, realistically, because you're the business, business owner, you got to be prepared to invest even more than legitimate uh, effort. I need you to be willing to invest legitimate effort on steroids times two if you want to be successful. I mean, we hear all these statistics about how I don't know. I mean, these crazy statistics. Well, 80% of small businesses fail. I don't know what they are because I think they're overly inflated, but there's so many variables in there that I think are inconsequential that they don't take into consideration, or I should say they overly take into consideration, i.e. people who start a small business and they just go into it, like you said, Raul, part-time. They just want to earn a little extra income. If that's how you're going to approach starting a medical transportation business, I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't do it. Just go drive for Uber or Lyft, make a little extra money. Now, again, it would be very easy for me to go off on a three-hour doctoral dissertation in response to your email, Raul. 
But I'm going to cut it off here. I'm going to share uh, a clip from the Roundtable Gathering uh, in Atlanta, a great event. Uh, where one of our attendees asked us asked me specifically what is the ideal vehicle so um, Raul don't take offense to it hopefully you got thick skin and you understand and can appreciate my feedback but for those of you seriously I'm, I'm, I'm dear Lord Jesus please give him some wisdom and patience 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 to act prudently I am I implore you please before you go off and invest money in vehicles, equipment, insurance, before you sign any contract, please study the heck out of my material. If you're even super duper serious, do the one-on-one -on -one coaching or at least as a minimum, study the DVDs where I break down the broker agreements, all that kind of good stuff. Study and learn my material. And trust me, I get it. I get it. I get it. There's so much free crap out there. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to include a second clip. Following this, I'm going to include the uh, segment from the Roundtable Gathering. And following that, I'm going to include a second segment where uh, two of the attendees talk about how they purchased a, a lower-priced ebook uh, talking about non-emergency medical transportation. And they clearly talk about what a bust it was, and then they ended up reading my material. So please, I know there's a lot of crap out there. Practice good discernment and decipher through all that. Contact us. Enlist our help before you go ahead and invest real money in this business. I'll see you at the top. Do you understand what I'm saying where you never want to go buy something and then have to find a need to cultivate around it and to fit that. Right. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. You know, you want to be able to identify, there's a need, I got the solution. That's the way we have to approach business bottom line. When you are able to say, all my decisions are going to be based on numbers, it is painfully liberating. Painfully liberating. Mm -hmm. It so is, is painfully liberating. What is that ideal vehicle that you're talking about? Is that the E350? That well, the big ones now would be, um, and it's, trust me, I'm not like, I'm not partial to like Ford or Chevy. I could care less. Right. You know, I'm not a vehicle guy. I could care less. I'm, I'm a, I love green. I'm, about, I'm a money guy. Um, but you had the Ford Econo line, which was replaced by the Transit. The thing is, the, the Fords, like take the example I'll tell you before about the guy and girl who went to a $61,000 Mercedes. Even if that made sense, which it doesn't, but even if it did, the maintenance is going to cost you a lot on a Mercedes versus a Ford. You know, and we've got about 15 transits. They're excellent. They are excellent. Lots of headroom. 100 percent room. Drivers love them. All kinds of windows. So what I would say is, if you first of all, if you were starting, if I was working with you one on one, we're not going to buy a new vehicle starting now. We're going to buy used. We're going to get a good deal. We're going to shop around. That means we got to look a little uh, further, wait a little bit longer, dig a little deeper, and so be it. Because the deals are out there. So we buy vehicles that are already outfitted. We're not doing like back in the day when I was having to convert vehicles. We're not doing that. But you want a vehicle that could easily uh, accommodate at least two wheelchairs. Um, if you are doing, if you're going to be able to do stretchers, you got to have a side mounted lift, hydraulic lift uh, from the side versus if, you, if it's only going to be a wheelchair ambulatory vehicle, you want rear mounted hydraulic lift. So you got to be able to accommodate two wheelchairs, A, B, you want to have at least one jump seat that can accommodate at least two people in the back. Mm. The reason why is, let's say, and there are times that if you are taking two wheelchairs, just by chance, they may both have an attendant with them. Mm -hmm. Well, they got to be accommodated. Um, sometimes you're not even going to have wheelchairs, but guess what? I could still use that vehicle as a crossover to deal with the ambulatory. Just like he said, you could take them up on a lift, put the seat down, they can climb in the front, whatever they want. But that is increased capacity versus a minivan. Um, some people will say, yeah, but you know, fuel costs this and that. I'm going to tell you also, minivans, man, they are just not made for commercial use. They're not going to take the ground to pound. And if you think your employees are going to take care of your vehicles like you, you are insane. They're going to slam and bang and kick and punch and dent and they don't care because guess what? They don't pay for it. They're going to treat like that, like crap. And, and, and when I see that there's old medical transportation coming in and out all the time, I said, why wouldn't I do that as well? So I bought a book. 
No, I bought a book. No, hold on. See, I didn't buy Joe's first. I didn't. Hold I on. bought a different one too. No, I bought a different one, but the guy was talking about Joe. Let's <laughs> get out of here. I'm sexy. Get the out real out expert. The real <laughs> expert. Get out of here. So I bought, I bought uh, Joe's book, and I said, you know what? Let me sign up. This guy knows what he's talking about. Uh, let, let's make it happen. And it's been a blessing. I have seen that with Joe a few times. And, we're making it happen. Awesome. There's no way around it.